what kind of shrinkage compensation to apply to a mole has always been a point of uh, great interest to almost everybody involved with plastics uh, manufacturing. So we are going to look at a few of these methods um, that are followed in the industry, and then uh, we're going to talk about the next section of the, how simulation software can actually help in this aspect. So one of the first methods that uh, we are going to look at is what we call a trial and error method. Now, the name doesn't mean that this is a bad approach. It's just more time taking. It's not maybe as efficient as what it can, how that process can be. Now, this was a very good method to follow back, you know, to uh, several years ago when uh, technology wasn't as advanced, when you had to cut steel to figure out, you know, what was uh, the part coming out to be. Now, I'm not saying that uh, cutting steel is a bad way or it can be done away with, but there are ways to optimize how many times you need to recut steel. And of course, the holy grail is to have a good part the first time you cut steel. Anyway, coming back to this method, right? To overcome, you know, the what page problem, how people go about it is basically, let's say in this example, you have a, you have a geometry where you have your uh, original process, and then you have a mold trial where you're trying to come up with a better process, with sort of a good process window, optimize your process. Like for example, here, you have your original process where your packing time was three seconds, your uh, packing pressure was 50% uh, of your peak injection pressure at transfer point. And then as part of the mold trial for T2 and T3, it was decided to uh, increase your pack time for T2 while keeping your pack pressure the same, while for T3, the pack time was left the same and the pack pressure was doubled. Now, with this approach, we want to see what it does to the overall warpage, where for this part, the original process gave a warpage range, total displacement basically, of uh, 0.08 to 0.74 millimeters, meaning uh, if you see from this plot, from this picture here, your maximum warpage was happening at the ends, and then your uh, minimum was happening in the center, somewhere around here. Now with T2, where the pack time was increased while the pack pressure was left the same, it did end up reducing the warpage just about a little bit. But with T3, where your pack pressure was uh, doubled, and the pack time was left the same, that helped to reduce the warpage quite a bit. 